Welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. Featuring Sys Admin Expert, Don Pizzette. Security Specialist, Daniel Lowry. And Peter. Hello and welcome to Technado with Don Pizzette. I'm your host, Peter Van Rysdam, joined as always by Don Pizzette. Don, how you doing over there today? I am doing great. It's been a really, really weird week for tech news, so I'm looking forward to talking about that. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to talk about spinach or <laughs> some some weird, wild stuff. Yeah, good times. Who used to say that? That's wi- oh, it's Johnny Carson. Johnny right? Carson. That's wild, yeah. wacky stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's Daniel you heard there answering. Daniel, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm impressed with your uh, Johnny Carson impersonation, actually. It was not bad. Oh, thanks. I wouldn't even try. And maybe yeah. that's the point. You just have to let You, you know, just got to let natural. it go. Yeah. yeah. All right, that, I, that's my only impression I'll do because I am horrible. <laughs> it, uh, like I'll, I'll be doing like a Russian accent, I think, and people are like, where, where are you from, Pakistan? Where is <laughs> <that?"> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. And we are joined as well by a very special guest, uh, Kathy Chambers, who is the newest edutainer here at IT Pro TV. Kathy, how are you? I'm awesome. It's good to be here. Yeah, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we like to to bring in the new edutainers and uh, and get to know them a little bit. Uh, so you've you've kind of... Been, you've been here what about a month? Almost, almost a month. Yeah, so yeah. flying under the radar, but we yeah. finally were able to to sneak you in here. So let's go ahead and get to know Kathy a little bit in our first segment, rapid fire questions. Who do you work for? What's new? Who are you? What's happening? What's wrong with you? All right, Kathy. In this segment, we are going to pepper you with rapid fire questions. Each one will start a one minute timer. Actually, we get a five minute. I don't know. We get some kind of timer. It'd be fun if it was like three <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, three seconds. Uh, you yeah. get one minute to answer. If you go along, Peter will buzz you. <clears throat> Just like that. And we'll move on to the next question. So the pressure is on. Uh, we'll rotate through each one of us. The first question is coming at you from Peter. So, so many of our edutainers come like with an IT training background first, then we move them uh, here to to the online. But but you kind of come from a different background. You have like a television production history. So can you tell us a little bit about what you did before you came here to IT Pro TV? Sure. Um, I was a television news producer for ten years uh, before diving into field production and live events at the University of Florida. Well, that, I'm yeah. not going to buzz her because <laughs> I, I feel like, like you should buzz her just to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm buzzing you for too short. You too went short over the one. three second limit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, you know, as judged by the brevity of your first answer, it, it sounds like you don't have a lot of experience in front of the camera. <laughs> what uh, What makes you think you're qualified to be an IT Pro TV edutainer? Uh, well, there was a help wanted sign in the window, and I just came in, and somebody said, hey, you're hired. That's how I got the job. That shows yeah. us our, our rigorous <laughs> <Yeah>. onboarding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very stringent requirements. Uh, so I started off in news, like I said, and um, I was a reporter for a minute until I realized it just really didn't fit my personality. Uh, years later, um, I fell into a job as a host reporter for an agricultural show, um, which was a lot of fun, magazine style. We had a really good time, and that seemed to fit uh, a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Way different than my story where Don and I just got drunk behind a dumpster. <laughs> Next thing you know, I work here. Yeah, here you are. <laughs> here, here I am. That's the old uh, interview process. Yeah, that's the old interview <laughs> process. Now, Kathy, you've only been here a short time, but... Um, you have already been hosting some shows. What exactly have you been hosting for? So I'm working with ACI on a series of audit courses. And um, so that's what I've been doing pretty much nonstop. Uh, so I think when I'm done, it'll be like close to 200 courses wow. um, I or episodes, I should say. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to get started. It's that's been great. A lot. So as Daniel said, you've been on kind of on the hosting side um, to this point. Do you have plans to uh, to be like the m- more of a subject matter expert as you go on? And if so, what, do you, what are you looking to focus on? Well, I think I'm an expert in a lot of things, but people tell me otherwise. Um. Sure, I get that. <laughs> she has course. strong views on the Peruvian <laughs> GDP. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think that you're never too old to learn. Uh, so I would like to do some things on some learning strategies. Uh, you know, as we get older, we tend to forget things. So I think I have some really good tips on some learning strategies for some folks. So I think I'll start there. Very nice. And uh, my last question for you. So I was kind of a news background, too, just in college. I didn't really pursue it afterwards. But, you know, even just in that time at, like, college TV and radio stations, I covered some weird stuff. And so I'm curious what your craziest story is, especially considering that you said you did an agricultural magazine-style show. I did. <laughs> but there's some good stuff there. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have trouble picking one. But I one of, you know, when you think of a farm, like if I said, what farm animal comes to your mind? A lot of people would say, like, a cows, chickens, pigs. Um, I think the weirdest one I visited was a camel farm. 
Uh, yes, yeah. actual camels. It, it wasn't Tiger King? No, in central <laughs> central Oklahoma. You know, Tiger King was in Oklahoma, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Same, same <sighs> state. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I went to a camel farm. It was pretty cool. No, a camel farm. All right, so a, a cattle farm, you, you can get milk, you can get beef, you know, a pig farm, you get bacon. Yeah. What, what do you get from a camel farm? There's a guy with, like, bleach blonde hair, and somebody got their arm bit off by a camel. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with uh, all those homes? Well, yeah. <laughs> interesting, you should ask. Uh, milk. We sell camel milk. No it way. sells for over a hundred dollars a gallon. I've what? never for camel milk. We, we I mean, can, they're mammals, but yeah. yeah but I mean, yeah. like, can I'm, you milk me? That's a lot of probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a photo here uh, yeah. for those of you so, who are watching on the uh, on the video <laughs> side of is that you? I, and, that is, and the that is me. <laughs> that's about twelve years ago, and um, uh, you know, a funny story behind this. So I was really excited to do this story because I've you know never been in a field of camels. Sure. So later on that day, I went and I talked to this vet, and I said, "Hey, this is what I did today. Can you tell me about uh, raising camels in Oklahoma? Is the environment good? Is the climate good?" And she said, "You did what?" And I said, well, I was in the field with all these camels. And she said, that is so dangerous. She's like, you piss one off and they'll trample you to death. (laughs) And I'm like, what? And here I am. You can see in the picture, I'm like petting the camel like a moron. I had no idea. I had no idea. Did the camel have a teardrop tattoo? (laughs) (laughs) Not filled in yet. The the male camel was very, uh, he did not like us. Yeah, that one on the far right looks like it's uh, (laughs) planning to come for you in just a moment. You got out just in the I had no idea. I had no idea. (laughs) Congratulations on uh, on not dying. Yeah, I, I survived. Way to go. All right. Uh, I, th- I think we've gotten an hour uh, more than <laughs> more than we were necessarily. I have all for. kinds of stories. Anytime you yeah, want to have me no, on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if that's just one. <laughs> I, I, as long as there's pictures and proof of the other ones. Camel King. I do. I, yeah. I the new Netflix it. series. Yeah, Camel King. King. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, uh, for our next segment, we're going to have a little fun and do a little bit of a, uh, a game show style thing in our next segment, Pop Quiz. This is a Pop Quiz. All right, so what we're doing in this one, we're going to have a little bit of fun uh, with a game we've, we've wanted to do before, but this is where we see if something is gibberish or a virus. So we make fun all the time of the, the names of the different viruses out there. I mean, last week we talked about what, what was the, uh, uh, the botnet, Emotet, and mm-hmm. you know, just the, all these things that are just made up, ridiculous names, uh, Heartbleed, um, you know, give, give me a couple. Yeah, some more. Nimida, I, right? Code what? Red. Well, yeah, like schools. Nimda was just yeah. admin spelled backwards, backwards yeah. or that security tool at, at Black Hat the other year was like Meat Piston. Meat Piston. Oh, oh, I don't know how names. Didn't have there was like a C2 <laughs> that was like, about tr- it was called Trevor C2. It was about a dead cockroach. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what we're, uh, my, my theory uh, is that these make absolutely no sense, and so, you know, Kathy will get as many as our cybersecurity expert, <laughs> Daniel, and, and Don will kind of be right in the middle as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name uh, a virus, and you tell me if it is real or not, and uh, and I will I will judge you here. I've already uh, asked Courtney as well, who is our producer, and so we'll be able to, to judge how she does against you guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, our first one is <laughs> Melissa. Melissa is the name. Now, it's all caps except for a lowercase i. Sure. As these things are. So, uh, Don, let's start with you. I'll say that's real. That's yeah. a virus. Don says real. Daniel? Yeah, that's legit. Real. Kathy, you're going yes? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, should I go last? Maybe you should. Because I well, might yeah, know you them go last. last. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys are correct. Uh, Melissa was released on March 26, 1999. It was a macro uh, that targeted Microsoft Word and Outlook and caused $80 million in damages. Mm-hmm. $80 million in damages. That was crazy. All right. Our, our next one is Shadow Hammer. Shadow Hammer. So, Kathy, let's start with you. Uh, not real. Not real. Okay. Daniel? No, it's last. It's Don? Yeah. <laughs> Daniel is last. I know this one's tough because there's Rowhammer right now and right. a couple of others. I could see it being a variant to that, but I'm going to go not real. Not real. Okay. And Daniel? I don't know, so I'll, I'll just say real. Why not? Real. All right. Uh, that one is real. It, <laughs> uh, it affects <laughs> Asus computers. Uh, they were attacked using compromised update software, meaning that the attackers were able to modify Asus Live update utility uh, to deliver firmware and software updates to Asus hmm. machines. Shadow I mean, Hammer. That was just waiting to happen. So. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, our next one is Tiny Elvis. Tiny <laughs> Elvis. Kathy. 
I'm going to say real just for fun. Okay. I like the name. Yeah. Tiny uh, Elvis. Don. Uh, I'm going to go not real. Okay, and Daniel. Isn't that an Elton John song? Oh, oh that's uh, Tiny, Tiny Dancer. Tiny no, it's Danza. Tony Danza. <laughs> Tony yeah. Danza. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Danza. Tony Danza. Tony <laughs> Danza. I'll switch my vote to not real on this one. Not real. And uh, you, too, are correct. That is an underrated oh. SNL sketch, if you recall. <laughs> sure. Tiny Elvis. Do. You don't remember no, that? I don't yeah. remember that. Oh, it's he'd hilarious. Stand on dashboard and he'd, all he'd do, yeah. it was just this tiny <laughs> Elvis, and he would just <laughs> look at things around him and this. go, man, look at that stapler. That sucker's huge. Okay. <laughs> and it was just, he was really small, but the stapler was normal size. I remember the kitchen table, and there was a salt shaker. <laughs> uh-huh. He'd be like, man, that salt, salt shaker. huge. That sucker's huge. It was the whole segment. Was it Rob Schneider? Hilarious, yeah. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah. Gotcha. And in SNL style, they dragged it out for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just in pointing to things that were huge. But they were all regular size. That's the great <laughs> thing about it. All right. Uh, all right. We're progressing along here. Our next one is Joker Roo. Joker Roo. So Joker th- with uh, ooh on the end. Like ooh. Two O's. Oh, I'm going to say no. Not real. Kathy says not real. Joker okay. Roo. Uh, Don. I feel like a real hacker would have used a U instead of a double O, so I'm going to go not real. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not feeling the realness on this. So. All right. Mm. I'm oh, sorry. That a real is uh, a ransomware as a service, <coughs> and it's being promoted on Twitter via, via underground hacking sites. That's why I don't know. Allows it. affiliates <laughs> to gain access to a functional ransomware and payment server. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm 0 for 3, I think. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, not going, it's not going great. Uh, <laughs> There's a shiny city in the desert with your name all over it. I can always go back to Oklahoma. <laughs> Wait, I've right. got one, one for you, three for Daniel, and two for, uh, yeah. for Don is what I'm seeing so far. <laughs> all right, our next one is Hocus Pocus, but the O's uh, have umlauts. Umlauts mm-hmm. over the O's. Uh, Kathy? Uh, not real. Not real. Uh, Don? Uh, I feel like I'm in some kind of denial at this point. I'm going to go with not real again. <laughs> I just I don't think any of these are real. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel. This whole game is made I, up. I'm going to go with not real because if it is, it shouldn't be. <laughs> uh, you are all correct. Oh, yeah. finally. Uh, that is what I assume is the Norwegian version of the classic Bed Midler film. Uh, it's Hocus Pocus <laughs> with Inwats. All right. All right. Uh, next one is Creeper. Creeper. Uh, let's go. Let's go, Don first. Hmm. You know, I could see this one being real. It's like a kind of a Minecrafty theme to it. I'll, I'll go with real. Okay, real. And Kathy, I'm gonna go with real. Okay, you're just following Don and uh, <laughs> Daniel. Not following Don. Real. Okay. <laughs> Did you know this one? No. Oh, because I have this, no clue. <laughs> this is one of the first uh, viruses ever. It was de- uh, detected on ARPANET. Uh, it was a uh, self-replicating experimental program. Uh, written by Bob Thomas at BBN Technologies in 1971. Uh, and it flashed a message on your screen saying, I'm the Creeper, catch me if you can. Really? And then you would use That's the Reaper cool. program to uh, delete Creeper. You know, like, uh, you look at old school viruses, and they were, they were just kind of fun yeah. pranks. Yeah. And now they're just horrible. And you know, <laughs> you know what's fun here is we're learning, okay. too. They were yeah. they were fun in the beginning until you got to, like, that Michelangelo, remember oh, yeah, that one, yeah. where it would format your hard drive? That yeah. wasn't so funny. Oh, that, yeah, it's less fun. That's yeah. the next one, by Unless the way. Unless you really <laughs> liked formatting hard drives. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, I get to do like, it again. Oh, man, I just put this well, virus on my network. And, and then you had to wait, though, right? I don't remember what day it was <laughs> they <laughs> claimed was Michelangelo's birthday. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. All right, our next one is Dark Comet. Uh, Kathy. Oh, what a cool name. Isn't it? Yeah, sounds like a superhero. I'm going to go with real. Real? Okay, Don? Yeah. Dark Comet sounds like a cult, you know? Like, yeah, you got to oh, put really? on your you brand new Nike. Emasculate yourself. Yeah, and, and then a <laughs> comet will come by and take <laughs> you to see yeah, Lord just, Zeno. Just drink this Kool Aid oh. and, yeah. and um, catch the comet. I, I think I'm going to continue my not real streak not on real? this one. I, I t- I statistically, it's probably This is like real, when right? Daniel said everything was an actual Python. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Python, 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 Python. Just whatever, right? Daniel, what you got? Uh, I'm going to go with a real on that one. I, I think real. I know that one. Yeah, uh, Dark uh, Comet is real malware. Uh, it's a remote <laughs> access Trojan, a rat, uh, developed by Jean-Pierre Lestier. Jean-Pierre. Uh, See, now it still sounds more cult-like. Dark <laughs> Coder SC. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's got them sweet Nikes. And it was written back in no 08, undercarriage. <laughs> and then it began to proliferate uh, in the start of 2012, and it was discontinued partially due to its use during the uh, Syrian civil war to monitor activists. <laughs> so there you go. All right. The more you know. Next up is King Harvest. King Harvest. Uh, Don, let's start with you. Uh, <laughs> screw it. I think I'm in free spin at this point. Yeah. Uh, you are. Right. I'll, I'll go real. 
Real. I love okay. it. This uh, one, <laughs> Kathy. Not real. Not real. And Daniel. Man, I don't know. Real? Real. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kathy was the only one to get that one right there. Uh, was it not real? Not real. Oh, okay. King Harvest is the band whose song Dancing in the Moonlight peaked at number 13 Thank on February 24th, 1973. One hit wonder. There now, go. see, I, if you would have said King Missile, that would have been yeah. the dead giveaway. That's I what we should have done, a game or show Tiger on King One Hit Wonders. Harvest. Or King Diamond. It, it King could Diamond. be the same, <laughs> Kathy. One Hit Wonders or Viruses, they both have stupid <laughs> names. All right. Uh, our next one. Uh, Potting soil. See if, I, <laughs> <laughs> see if I pronounce this right. A- Ackles. A-C-H-L-Y-S. Ackles. Oh. Ackles? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Kathy. You're I'm going to say real. You're going to say real. Mm-hmm. Don. I believe it's pronounced Achleis and uh, definitely right? real. Okay. And Daniel. <laughs> yeah, reel it up. <laughs> All right. No one was right there. That is the, oh. the Greek goddess of poisons and the personification <laughs> of misery and sadness, said to have existed before chaos itself. If <laughs> it's not a virus, it, it will be, be soon. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm being told it has infected my <laughs> system. Correction. Now. Justin. Hold on, I'm writing some code right See, now. See, I tricked you guys by, <laughs> by not being able to pronounce it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. That was good. No, that was yeah. good. All right, I love this next one. Uh, Trojan Panda Banker. <laughs> Trojan Panda Banker. It looks like if there was like a website where it was like virus name generator. <laughs> like this is one that it <laughs> would come up with. It's the Wu-Tang name oh, generator. Like, there was the, uh, the grunge back. band. Like the bands, yeah. 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 Like Weeping Satchels. Or, yeah. uh, <laughs> Weeping Satchels. All right, uh, Don. Trojan I'll Panda Banker. I'll go with real. Screw it. Okay, and uh, <laughs> Kathy? Uh, not real. Not real. Daniel? Realistic. It is real. It is the late, uh-huh. uh, is a virus very similar to Zeus, uh, which is a fa- very famous virus. This malware uses the web to inject malicious code and steal users' banking information and credentials. Mm-hmm. Trojan Panda Banker. You're basically and, uh, just saying we're from China. No, uh, yeah, uh, I think like 10% of the proceeds goes to support the pandas. Yeah. All right, we have four more. Four more. So there's still a chance to which catch is up a, because Don has a five. <laughs> Don currently has five. Daniel has six, and Kathy has five. So everyone's wow. in this game. Actually, right doing now. pretty well. Oh, neck and neck. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm assuming I'm doing the score thing right. I'm doing it in Excel. So, uh, if, you know, if you get extra points, good for you. <laughs> All right. This next one is Dorkbot. Dorkbot. Uh, Kathy. Dorkbot. Dorkbot. I'm gonna go with real. Okay. And Don. I go with real. And Daniel. Real. You are all correct. Uh, mm-hmm. Dorkbot is a family of malware worms that spreads through instant messaging, USB drives, websites, or social media channels. Mm-hmm. All right. It's a family of worms. It, it is. It's a whole family. Peace on vacation. Glorious <laughs> little worms. All right. Next up is Simba. Simba. Simba is a lion. Yeah, Kathy. it's like Lion King. <laughs> it is Simba like killed lion his dad. King. He Aww. did. Some of them. <laughs> did he? Did he, though? Uh, not real. Not real. Uh, Don. I'll go real. Okay, and Daniel. Yeah, I'm going to go real on this one as well. Okay, Kathy is correct. Oh. And you were all correct. This is from The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> now, I put Simba in there uh, because of the next one that you'll all get because Don mentioned it as examples at the beginning. <laughs> Nimda. <laughs> Nimda. I thought it looked very much mm. like Simba. So I should wonder. I just put you all down for real on that for one? Because <laughs> Don yes, mentioned please. it? All right. And... Uh, yeah, that, of course, is admin backwards. Uh, and it spread so quickly because it uh, used five different infection vectors, which mm-hmm. were email, open network shares, browsing of compromised sites, exploitation of various internet information services, IIS, and then backdoors left behind by Code Red. So There we oh, go. Code Red. Yeah. All right, and our last and final one, just so you know, uh, Don has seven, Daniel has nine, Kathy has eight. Ooh, uh, I'm out. So I can't win. Uh this one is worth three points. <laughs> uh, you got to keep it interesting, right? It is Pikachu. 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 Mm, very Pikachu. F- I'm very familiar with Pikachu. Yeah. Kathy? Hmm. I'm going to say real. I'm going to say real. Uh, huh. Don? So, I mean, obviously it's a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it's a Pokemon. But I don't know if anybody named a virus after it. I'll go not real. Not real. Okay. And Daniel? What the heck? I'll reel it. We'll go real as well. All right. Uh, Pikachu is a virus. It was the first virus aimed at children. It asked the child <laughs> to remember him <laughs> always. But here's what's funny about this one. Uh, I, uh, I read that they forgot to put in like a certain line in the code. So it would actually give you a Windows prompt saying, would you like to run this? <laughs> and all you had to do was hit no. And it didn't <laughs> run. Uh, but if, it, if you did, it would delete uh, files from your hard drive. 
uh, huh. but asked permission, which was stupid. All right, All so right. our uh, final answers there. We have Don at seven. Wah, wah. Daniel with 12 because of that three-pointer. And Kathy right behind at 11. So I think we proved the point that virus names are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and random. <laughs> Random. That's all. Right. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan though of uh, which one was it? The Trojan Panda Banker. <laughs> Trojan Panda that's Banker. That's my favorite one, and the one that it's I like wouldn't mind. I just see like down. a giant wooden panda with like a a briefcase and a <laughs> satchel and a yeah. a fedora on some yeah. specs. It's like when Paddington Bear grows up and yeah. has a job. Yeah, but except he's, he's made of wood, and inside of him is pain and anger. Uh-huh. It reminds me <laughs> of South Park. You know, they have the sexual harassment panda. Mm. Oh, right. Do you yeah. remember that yeah. one? It's hilarious. Your little song. Mm-hmm. Sexual harassment panda. So, Kathy, uh, <laughs> back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be on next week. Can, <laughs> we, can we mute Don's mic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, we mentioned that you've been doing uh, some some audit courses. Uh, what do you have coming up on the on the radar down down the line? Um, I'm going to be on my first game show <gasps> here at IT Pro TV. Yes, you Who are. Who wants to be a project manager? Yes, that takes That's place on the soon. 26th, February yeah. at 2 p.m. And uh, I have my first webinar coming up with uh, ACI on audit. So. Should be that's cool. Fantastic. And that's with Hernan as well, with Dr. Yep. Hernan? Mm-hmm. Hernan's his first name. Yes, Dr. Hernan Murdoch. That's the one. That's I was the one. just that's testing the to you. That's the guy. Just <laughs> testing to see if you knew. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the game show is about project management questions. you have uh, project management experience as well? I do, in production, yeah. I do. So we'll, so we'll see. see how I do. See what round I get to. Just so you know, uh, because you are new, th- there's no money for those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure that's clear. And, and there's no job. You're not guaranteed no <laughs> to get a project <laughs> management job. So just put that uh, all out there. It's all in good fun. Well, thank you, Kathy. It was oh, great to uh, to get to know you better. And obviously, since you're you know right here in the building, um, I think yeah. you're. What are you across from Daniel's desk? Is it? Yes, yeah, is I am. That where, yeah. So we'll be He's able very to. Very lucky. Yeah. So anytime you know we don't have a guest, we'll just grab you. Yeah. Now. I'm, I'm ready. I'm down for it. And we will play another round of virus or gibberish or <laughs> gibberish or virus. <laughs> And that'll be fun. Well, thank you, Kathy, so much. And uh, uh, stay tuned, everybody. We're going to come back uh, from a quick break and do the news right after this on Technado with Don Pizzette. This is Josh. Josh spent $2,500 on a week of classroom training for CompTIA A+, and got certified. Josh got a good job that pays $40,000 per year. This is Jeremy. Jeremy only spent $299 on a full year of training from IT Pro TV, including A Plus and 300 other courses. Jeremy also got a great job that pays $40,000 per year. Jeremy used the more than $2,200 he saved on IT training for a fabulous tropical vacation. Now, Jeremy is still using his IT Pro TV membership to study for Network Plus and Security Plus to advance his career, but not spending any more money. Since all three are in Included in his IT Pro TV membership, plus 300 more courses. Don't be like Josh. Choose IT Pro TV for your IT training. All right, welcome back to TechNado with Don Pizzette, and thank you so much to Kathy Chambers for joining us and sharing a little bit about herself with us and uh, and playing that game. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but we do have a lot of news to get to. Uh, we've got even a, a WTF segment and uh, and a story that was sent to us by a viewer. But let's go ahead with our first article of the day, which is from CNBC.com. I didn't know they did stories that weren't about uh, GameStop shares anymore, mm-hmm. but they do. <laughs> uh, because Google Cloud lost $5.61 billion dollars on $13.06 billion in revenue last year. I didn't think that you could lose money in the cloud computing world, but apparently you can if you're Google Cloud. Are they just getting crushed by by AWS and Azure? Well, yeah, you have to be careful with some of these numbers, right? Because a lot of the hardware that's in place, Google was going to have anyway, right? Because they needed to support their own infrastructure. And then in theory, they're kind of renting out the space they're not using. So uh, you, you'd expect them to have a, a certain amount of investment in it. And so a negative number like this isn't really bad on the company. But where it is bad is that you know they're in third place in the in the cloud market space right so aws is first azure is second and then google is in a distant third place you know way back so they're at 13 billion in revenue last year if you were to take microsoft and google they're closer to the like 55 to 60 billion dollar a year mark so they're at like 10 times the revenues of google so google is really really a distant third place and they're playing catch up and when you see them have a loss like that, this is where, like, if you're a CIO 
you start to get a little nervous because Google Google cancels services all the time. Hmm. And they say, oh, you know, Waze, <laughs> eh, we'll get rid of that. Yeah, or you know, Wave. Uh, yeah. Wave, sorry, yeah. Wave, not Waze. Waze is still there. Waze is still there. Yeah. Uh, but they have plenty of things that they launch, or they'll launch them and then not improve upon them for 10 years, like Gmail or, or other products where they just kind of ignore them. The Google Calendar looks very 1999. And I just, knew they, st- they made a wrong turn with the Google turd. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> That's a weird code name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> weird code name. Catchy though, uh, so <laughs> I remember. Kind of sticks. Yeah, it's, uh, it does. <laughs> so, so anyhow, it is interesting to see numbers like these come out. That they did make 13 billion in revenue, but once you factor in their costs and advertising and marketing and all the other things that go on top of it, they actually lost 5.6 billion dollars, which to us sounds like a lot of money. That's because that's a lot of money, but not, <laughs> not to, to them. them. <laughs> to them, they'd have to lose like a trillion dollars to really get upset about it. Yeah, they are rolling in it. Uh, so you know, we'll continue to see Google Cloud competing, but they're just not it's just not going to take the market by storm anytime soon. When it says in here, too, that that uh, they're investing heavily in sales staff, and that's part of the, the cost. So, you know, it could be that they're positioning themselves to make a big push in the future, you know, investing in new hardware and sales staff, things like that, where, you know, they can obviously uh, depreciate those things over time in the future, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think, in a way, they're suffering from how they've handled Android over the years. Uh, or really all of the Google services where like you cannot contact a human being at Google. And if you post in their support forums, Google blatantly ignores all of their support forums. So like they for 20 years now, Google has communicated this simple message of we hate our customers. Mm. And, uh, you know, and that's just it. Like message received. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no 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 debate. There's no variation is consistent. They hate their customers across the entire board. And uh, so it, it's hard for me to say, like, oh, I, I would want to run my business on their infrastructure because when things run right, you're fine. But when things start to mess up, are they trying to like basically I, I haven't used their cloud platform before. I've used Azure and I've used AWS, which seems pretty mm-hmm. straightforward. Is it just that much worse, or why are people choosing those structures yeah. over Google, who's a pretty big entity? Yeah, so it's not as feature rich as AWS. Like mm-hmm. AWS has a hundred different services now, yeah. right? Uh, but Google heavily invested in Kubernetes, right? That, that came out sure. of Google, so they've got all the automation platform in there for it. If you use Kubernetes, you could dive into Google Cloud right now, no problem. Hmm. Uh, so they they've got the technology and the the core infrastructure that you need in the cloud. But the thing is, it's just it's Google, yeah, and they're late to the game. Uh, AWS is huge. Microsoft, you know, if you take the Office 365 revenues and dump it in with Azure, Microsoft actually does more sales than AWS. Hmm. But if you don't count Microsoft 365, right? If you just count the, the Azure piece, it's not. You know, AWS is in the lead. So really, for most businesses, that's it. You choose between those two platforms. You don't think, oh, I'm going to go with this distant third place. There's too much risk. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Plus, I'm, they hate you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't be evil. Yeah. Um, but th- this kind of reminds me of like things like the Zune or, or things from, from Microsoft where, hey, it's a great product, but it's so late to, to right. the market where, you know, everyone's already used to this other, um, you know, ecosystem. And so why would I move over there? It might and, be the best. Who knows? Honestly, no one's on it. if everything, you know, what Don is talking about here where you have so much more features with other platforms, even if they were to up their game and have parity with them, I still wouldn't go with Google because they hate me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, if you have a track record of providing bad or right. non-existent customer support. I will go with less features even for a good customer service experience. Yep. Yeah, th- I think that's Azure's tagline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're not as good, yeah. but we're way better yeah. when things go wrong. But we're listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, our next article is from Forronics.com. The work ahead for Ubuntu 21.04 to switch to Wayland by default. Uh, Don, I don't know what those words meant, um, so why don't you <laughs> right. fill me in there. So when you install Linux with a graphical user interface, right, you have a desktop environment, and for many, many decades, that desktop environment has been X-Windows, or X11R6 has been there for well, 30 years now at least. Uh, it's been around a long time. And X is very old. It uh, was not designed with security in mind. It was designed at a time when security wasn't really something people worried about. And so it's got a lot of shortcomings, a lot of problems. And Wayland was created over a decade ago to serve as the logical successor to X. But the problem is it breaks a lot of software. And so people didn't adopt it readily, and it's been taking a long time to get adopted. Uh, Fedora was one of the first Linux distros to switch to using Wayland by default. They did that several years ago. 
And now the flag is up that Ubuntu is ready to make that change as well. Now, 21.04 is not a long-term release. It's a short-term release version that's coming out uh, in April. So just in a couple of months. And if they can get through these last couple of bugs, then Wayland will be the default desktop uh, engine or the window. Shoot, what's it called? Window uh, manager, right? It's, it's not the window the manager. Like Gnome manager. is the window yeah. manager, right? The desktop environment. The desktop compositor. Got to make sure I use the right terminology. Anyhow, mm -hmm. whatever the engine is behind the yeah. scenes. Um, so, or actually, Wayland combines. I think you're right because Wayland combines the two. In okay. X, it was a separate entity. Gotcha. So, so either way, Wayland will become that default. It looks like if not in 21.04, then it'll happen in 21.10, which means when 22.04 comes out, which is the next long-term support or LTS release, that one it looks like we are going to have Wayland as the default. So get ready for that if you have applications and things dependent on X or if you do X11 forwarding over SSH, like that's all gone in Wayland. So you've got to find a, you know, make sure your applications are compatible so or find alternatives. You think people are going to be just like installing X after that so they can have all their stuff still work? <laughs> Some people do. I mean, I, I did in the beginning with Fedora because I wanted to use VNC, which worked yeah. great on X. Any kind of screen sharing worked great on X, not under Wayland. Mm. And it took a few years before VNC see updated and so you might get that but honestly ubuntu is so far behind now uh with with fedora already using wayland right. all these years that i don't think it'd be that big of a deal okay is this wayland jennings <laughs> it's, uh no, it's wayland Way enterprises wayland yutani yeah okay <laughs> just some good old boys and them duke boys sure got themselves in a world of trouble this day all right well there uh, we go uh, yeah cool that, that <laughs> now i'm much more clear on all I know you're very worried about that. Oh yeah, that. Your, your Mac does not use any of that. <laughs> you're yeah. right. Oh, thank God. <laughs> like, what do, what do I have to do now? All right, our next article. Apple uh, goes to Wayland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I should have paid attention. Damn it! Our next article is from HotHardware.com. Uh, hot Hardware near <laughs> you. Yeah, no. Uh, all right. Uh, this one is Raspberry <laughs> Pi users mortified as Microsoft repository that phones home is added to Pi OS. So is mortified the right word? So, you know, that's what I was thinking. Like, I really need to create a <laughs> newsfeed filter for the word mortified because, you know, <laughs> mortified means like you are so shocked you could die. Yeah. And it's I, like I, you're embarrassed at, at what you did if you're mortified. And well, I, you I can be embarrassed it. at other people and still I be guess. mortified. Yeah. Like, what what would it take for you to be mortified about something? <laughs> it would be really, like, you know. Usually it's something to do with your kids. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> right. think there have been any deaths related to this or, story. Yeah, like if I accidentally killed somebody else's kid, I would be mortified. Yeah. Like that, But in this case. I mean, that's the um, literal version of mortification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Murder. So, uh, yeah. Raspberry Pi OS, the official Raspberry Co. whatever supported AKA image. AKA Raspbian back in the day, right? Well, it used to be Raspbian, yeah. right? Which is no longer based on Debian, but now based on Ubuntu. And so now it's called Raspberry Pi OS. Um, in the latest update, and this is not a, not necessarily a release. If you just do a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, uh, you'll get this. They've added a Microsoft repository to the list of official repositories, and people are blowing up about it. Now, when I say people, it's you know at least one <laughs> because you know they have a Twitter account. That's how our modern society works. Uh, but they're freaking out because basically every time you do an update, your Raspberry Pi is reaching out to Microsoft's repositories and letting you, them know you exist. So. So basically, you're telling Microsoft that you're running Raspberry Pi OS, and you're giving them your IP address, and so they can now start to connect some, uh, what do they call it, telemetry. Mm -hmm. uh, telemetry to learn a little bit more about you and basically invade your privacy. Um, now, the reason this repository has been added is that Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, they have adopted Visual Studio Code as their IDE, their... Um, uh, development environment that they support for kids that are, are learning how to program and working with the Raspberry Pi and Visual Studio Code is a open source project that is created by Microsoft. And so Microsoft has the repository for it and that's what they've connected to. Now, other distros wouldn't do this. Other distros would ask that Microsoft publish their packages into like Canonical's uh, repository so you can get it from uh, Ubuntu's repos. But that's not what happened here and people are freaking out. But I, I just... 
the, the part that's really silly here to me is that Raspberry Pi OS is not a security-focused distribution. It's not a privacy-focused distribution. It's a training operating system. So if you're mortified over the security level, you're an idiot because <laughs> you know you can actually run Ubuntu on a Raspberry Pi. Hell, you can run Windows 10 on a Raspberry Pi. So if you want security and privacy, you need to switch to one of the other distros. Raspberry Pi OS is not the one that'll do that. So as I was reading the article, that so one person was saying how they were so angry because basically it's it's installing something. Or, or it's writing uh, to the the file system or doing something like that as admin without admins like permission. That was the kind of the idea they were trying to throw out there. Yeah. And I'm like, just write a script that removes it. I mean, this is Linux here. You put yeah. the, the one things that you change it. So that that argument was a little bit of BS too yeah. because it, it it's a update script. Yeah. So you know when you do an update, you're normally downloading uh, packages, right? DEB packages right. and all that. Uh, but this was a script that ran after. It's not like it didn't ask for the privileges. You gave it. You had to do a sudo right. app to run it. That's, that's how it works. But I, I, again, I'll just say if you, if you don't want stuff like this to happen, you've got to run an actual distro that's designed for production use, not Raspberry Pi OS. And are those update scripts like unreadable by the root user that they can't modify them? I know they're digitally signed. I don't know if they're not readable. Gotcha. I just mean like, could you modify them so that it doesn't do the thing you don't want it to do? I don't think so. Really? You, you, I mean, you can blacklist the update. Right. And and then you wouldn't well, there get you it. Go. Yeah. There you go. There's not like you don't have like countermeasures that you can do is what I mean. Yeah. You can make your own Linux distro. Yeah. That does this. You can. Well, yeah. you could totally do that. Daniel be in. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Bian. Dan Bian. Dan Bian. There you go. Like that Ambien, sounds like right? Ambien. Yeah. Ambien, yeah. Take it's two just, Dan You Bien. put one on, it has like a little white noise machine. <laughs> just relax. Yeah. Yeah, that, that guy wrote uh, that it is shady AF. Um, yeah. That, that, I do like the last line of this article. It says, yeah. oh, you got that it. sort of thinking enraged people and has in this case. Or as another person wrote, I'm sorry, Raspian, but I have to say goodbye to you. No hard feelings. I wish you all the best and rotten hell. You know, it's amazing when people get fired up over these yeah, days, know, isn't right? it? Like, this is, is such a non-issue. That but guy is Twitter. straight up mortified. <laughs> yeah, mortified. Mortified. And that's what really grinds my gears. <laughs> yeah, there we go. As it does. Got to use that again. Uh. All right, our next article is from xda-developers.com. That just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> uh, Google just booted the great suspender off the Chrome Web Store for being malware. And it's funny because I used to have the Great Suspender, and yep. I disabled it a while ago because it just kind of got annoying it's at certain times. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> just this week, what, what, was it this? Week? I think it was near the end of last week. I had a notification pop up in Chrome that says, "We've deleted Great Suspender because it is malware." And I'm like, "Yep, I forgot I still had that. Thank you." Yeah. <laughs> so this is a huge problem that we've got right now. I, and a lot of times I'll hear about these rogue Chrome extensions, and I'm like, "Oh, nobody runs that." But in this case, it was the Great Suspender, which I used to run uh, back in the day. And if you're not familiar with it, it was an extension that, if you're like me, and you have 20 <laughs> Chrome tabs open, right? If you if your Chrome tabs are the lazy man's to-do list, like <laughs> mine is, right, then each of those consumes memory. And, and Chrome goes crazy. Like, each tab is a gigabyte of RAM or some crazy crap like that. So you, your browser ends up consuming a ton of RAM. So what the Great Suspender would do is it would take tabs that you hadn't accessed in a while and basically put them to sleep. It would release their memory, and it would wipe the page. It basically hold the URL. And the next time you clicked on the tab, it would just reload the page. So you really noticed nothing different, but you didn't consume all the RAM on your computer. It really highlights, like, this is a Google problem they've needed to fix for years, but they haven't. So the Great Suspender kind of fixed that. Well, in the long run, it did get kind of annoying. There were some web pages that it would mess with. And I just got more RAM in the laptop. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I got rid of it problem a couple solved. of years ago. But the, the problem here is not so much the Great Suspender. The problem is that there is a very active, uh, malicious campaign going on right now where these they're, they're overseas companies, typically out of China, where they'll go to developers of plugins or extensions that are widely deployed. And in this case, over 10 million users, I think, had this one. And they'll buy the extension. So they'll go to this, you know, usually it's a, an individual developer, a single person who's created it, and they'll say, look, I'll give you $100,000 for your extension. Your extension that's never made you a dollar, I'll give you $100,000 for it. And the other person, the developer, will say, well, why wouldn't I do that? That sounds great. And they say, well, you got to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure. You can't tell anybody about this transaction. And so the developer will say, well, I guess that's just business. And, and they'll do it. And they get their 100 grand. Well, then the nefarious company will take that extension and stick adware, malware, key loggers, all sorts of crazy stuff on there. And then it deploys as an automatic update across a 10 million install base. And now you've got rapid 
spreading malware. This one actually rolled out back in December and was only removed in January. So like for a solid month, it had access to a huge install base. And it's not just happening with Chrome plugins. Uh, there was another article I didn't grab this week about an Android app that was a barcode scanner. And uh, do you guys remember like QR codes oh, yeah, are all yeah. the rage? Uh, they're still around, yeah, but not I a big deal. most phones still come with a QR reader, don't they? Well, yeah, they're built into the phone or the yeah. camera now. On uh, iPhone, they are, but on Android, they weren't. And yeah. so you always had to go and download one of the, the barcode scanner, scanners. Yeah. yeah, like X-Ming or whatever. And, yeah. uh, and so one of those that was widely deployed, and this one definitely was 10 million, uh, over 10 million downloads, yeah. uh, same thing happened. A developer came along and bought it and then packed it with adware and, and rolled it out. So the thing is, we can't... We, even if we trust an application when we get it, long term, if any kind of transaction of ownership happens, you don't know that you can trust those applications anymore. So well, I'm getting a flip phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, your desktop too. Like it, I'm getting a flip desktop. <laughs> yeah, it's a laptop. That's what you have. You really have to think twice before you use any Chrome extension or whatever. Uh, I know, like my. My brother uses this uh, Steam Chrome extension that will like show you the best price hmm. and, and let you sell uh, Steam cards and things like that, and it's all done through the browser. But what it's doing is it's fully scraping the page that you're on, and these are pages yeah. that do financial transactions. Like You you don't want to just give that access to some random company you've never heard of. I'm trying to think. What extensions do I use? I use LastPass, and I use um, a user agent switcher and a cookie manager, and that's it. Yeah. Well, you right. know, think think about that cookie manager. Yeah. Right. So it's going to have access to your cookies in some form or another. So who who made it? Is it is it somebody we can trust? Is yeah. it somebody we know? Is it a corporation like LastPass? You know, you can trust. Yeah. Cookie Monster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know where I got that from. It was just basically like a, a quick and easy way to get a hold of cookies so I can manipulate them. Yeah. And it could be doing something crazy. Now I do try to keep my extensions turned off unless I'm using them. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And because, you know, it, it may be written by a, a single developer right. and it was fine when you got it. And then years later, a transaction happens you don't know about. And now it becomes malicious. You've already got it installed. Yeah. So so I know there's a lot of hoops to jump through initially, like when you're putting an app in, um, you know, into iTunes or things like that. Is there not uh, are there not those checks as those updates come out? They're not scanning for, for I, certain things. I think what we've learned here recently is that those checks aren't good enough, hmm. that many of the applications have add SDKs or, or software development kits that kind of get built into them. And so they're reaching out to other servers to get these ads. And the developers can put whatever they want on those other servers. That's not part of the check process. And so stuff stuff slips through pretty easy. Now, this is where Apple kind of shines, right? Because they have such a much more controlled that this is less likely to happen there it does happen but it's less likely right uh, I, I would say it's less likely but don't confuse that for uncommon it right. actually happens quite a bit in the oh. apple store too so they might shine like they're the best but they're still pretty crappy <laughs> okay well there you so. go best turd in a box does, yeah it doesn't yeah. take much to be the best <laughs> yeah. yeah so they're all doing a bad job except for uh, microsoft with their windows mobile phone they're doing great <laughs> hey, they're killing it <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's easier for apple because they own the whole ecosystem right you know in terms of the hardware and the and the software yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know, they can do sandboxing to a degree, but I mean, Android can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, Samsung sure. always did a great job on their phones of sandboxing. But at the end of the day, like the user, you're you're yeah. trusting something. Yeah, and that implies that. And the yeah, the app store, them. the people that are doing the reviews, a lot of the reviews are fairly automated, and they just they, they can only catch so much. Yeah, Samsung does a great job until the the phone explodes. It does One time, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, our next story is actually a uh, local a, a piece of listener yeah. mail too. Let me uh, let me play that intro. You got mail. Oh, we did. We got mail from Emmanuel who told us about this story, and we also heard about it from from Brad in the office. So a few people talking about this one because yeah, it is local to us, but it is uh, definitely a national story as well. Uh, this one we picked the article from ThreatPost.com. Hacker tries to poison water supply of a Florida town. And so he was able to actually do this all remotely without any physical access uh, to this water treatment facility. Doc, Correct. can you walk us through it? Yeah, so uh, it, a few details have poured out. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did. Uh, pretty witty. All right, I see so, what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> so details are slowly trickling out on this. I, 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 I can do this Two all day. times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're dripping so, uh, out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but we don't have all the details yet. It's, sorry, that's what I'm driving at here. So we, we have to kind of deal with the information as it comes. But the short story is basically that there was a, a water treatment facility in Oldsmar, Florida, which is just outside of Tampa where the Super Bowl was held. That's where right? Wes is from. Is it? Yeah. 
Huh, I didn't know that. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think Wes did this. Well, now <laughs> I think Wes did now too. we know one of his privacy questions. Yeah, yes, we do. So, uh, <laughs> so and, now, and you all do too. <laughs> <laughs> we learned together. What's your so, hometown? <laughs> uh, Old Tomorrow, which I've never been to, but I'm, I'm familiar with the name. Uh, they had a water treatment facility there, and one of the operators noticed that a that somebody was logged into a computer and was doing something, and they were actually able to see them going in and changing the levels of lye in the water. Small amounts of lye are added to the water to remove contaminants. So it's a, a normal thing. In small doses, it's fine. In large enough doses, it it's, kills people. It's murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that how you do? Uh, you get rid of a body? Uh, yes. Uh, you can use lye. You can use okay. lye. Cool, cool. Yeah. So apparently, they normally keep it at 100 parts per million. Uh, and the person logged into the computer bumped it up to 11,100 parts per million. So <laughs> a significant yeah. increase uh, that could have been uh, dangerous and definitely deadly in many you scenarios. Know, they just thought they were doing it right. They were like, you know what? Them parts per million ain't right. I got to bump that up. You guys got to get that stuff out your water. <laughs> now, there are, are people that theorize that this was an attack on the Super Bowl. That mm. if they could taint the water supply in a nearby town, possibly that could affect people and, and serve as a terrorist act. So this certainly could be that way. We don't have that information Because yeah, all yet. the football players drink water. <laughs> but they certainly do. Well, you know, Gatorade, though. They're trying to kill out. that Brady guy. Yeah. <laughs> people really don't like him. Oh, man. <laughs> He's a Super Bowl winning machine, though, isn't he? Apparently. <laughs> like if I, I could take out 100,000 other people with this, but as long as Brady's one yeah. of them. <laughs> it's like the D.C. sniper, man. He was just killing random people so that he could kill his wife and get away with it. Yeah, you got to... Get that one. So uh, interesting, though, is some of the, the details are trickling out that uh, apparently in this case, somebody had installed TeamViewer on the console that controlled this water system and uh, and left it on. Hadn't been used in a while, but left it on. And the attacker was able to remotely gain access to the machine. Because I, I thought it was suspect. One of the early quotes said that they... They noticed somebody logged into the computer. And I thought that was a weird way to put it, right? Like, mm. you might see activity in a log or get a notification from your seam or whatever. Hey, these API calls have happened. And you're like, well, that's odd. That shouldn't happen. But they they, they saw somebody in the computer. It's just like the mouse is somebody? actually yeah. moving on the machine. And <laughs> that's it. It's Correct really? me if I'm wrong, Don. But when we used to work at a certain area, somebody had that exact thing happen. And had you investigated? Oh yeah, I had to dig. That. I, I do recall that. Yeah, because yeah. they, they could see the mouse moving. Yeah. They could see the yeah. person typing, and so like you know, this was a case of that might have been a very secure network, but somebody put TeamViewer on there, left it open, or did a bad password, and an wow. attacker got in. But then the attacker went that step further of figuring out like how to use the water system and how to change that number. Now, I don't think your average run of the mill, even like Russian state sponsored hacker. <laughs> knows to bump up the parts per million of sodium hydroxide or whatever. So I bet this turns out to be like some disgruntled employee. That would be uh, my guess. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. To, to know that to stuff have was set that, up. That level of insider knowledge to, to those systems and how they work and what would be yeah. the best thing to go after. Now, they did say there was a bunch of checks and balances, though, that like even if they were to get away and know what it was seen, it would have only gotten so far – and it still would have been... Yeah, because the water's hated. tested yeah. before it's going out or right. something, so they would have noticed. I mean, it, it yeah. might have cost a lot more money, you right, know, because they might true. have had to go offline, but... It's good to know, but again, it begs that question. Every time I see these articles, why is our power grid connected to the internet? Why is our water supply connected to the internet? These are systems that should not be connected Don, to the internet at all. You know how easy it is for me to just sit in my jammies and administer the water supply? That is so much you know, nicer than having to go out into the field... Plug into some uh, PCL. That's a pain in the ass. <laughs> what does so the U.S. military? They have the two networks. Uh, I forget their names. It's like Nixnet and do you remember these? I don't remember those. No, the red and blue computers. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the U.S. military, they have two different networks, and so one network is connected to the internet, and right. you're allowed to do. Uh, Non regular stuff. Yeah, yeah I can drive my drone from home. <laughs> yeah, but then you've got the other net. Uh, is it Nippernet? I can't remember the name. Anyhow, <laughs> so you get the other network, which is secure. And, right. and if you're doing anything with classified documentation, you have to use this other network. It is not connected to the internet. It is heavily restricted. Like, our our utilities, our power grid, and all that, that should be really secure, not this wide-open thing that it is. It, it, it was it, um, I think it was FireEye or Kaspersky. They did a huge, like, a couple of years ago, they were doing some, like, uh, looking at SCADA systems and ICSs and all that and, and saying, you know, what What are the big flaws here? And it's funny, that list was basically the same list as any computer system because all the stuff was getting connected. The other like, oh, yeah, well, now that they're cell enabled or somebody stuck a Wi-Fi adapter on there so that they can do all this stuff from their car, their mobile, whatever. 
It's like once you do that, now you're giving somebody access into those systems, and now I yep. can start poking at it, find the flaw, and then I find my way in. You got to keep that stuff air gapped. Yep. I just looked it up real quick. So uh, Nippernet, Nippernet is the non classified internet protocol router network. So that's the one for uh, uh, any kind of data. And then Sippernet is the secret internet protocol router network. Uh, and that's one for secret information okay. and classified data. So you heard it here first. That's how the US military does it. And because I, I remember seeing a demo, there was a company that had created a keyboard. Because if you're running like Cubes OS or yeah. whatever, you could have one window that was on Sippernet and one window that was on Nippernet. And they didn't want they didn't want soldiers to get confused and maybe start doing something. <laughs> that could be window. bad. <laughs> so they had taken a keyboard with LEDs. This is really cool because yeah. if you clicked on a Sippernet window, your keyboard turned red, and ah. if you clicked on a Nippernet window, your keyboard would turn blue or green. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And so you you knew if you were in a classified yeah. window or not. So it was neat stuff. Now I want to do that just for fun. I'm you sure guys can set cool that as hell. I want to get one of those mechanical keyboards that sit on top of your laptop. Have you seen those? Mm -mm. Yeah, I, th I think that's what it is. Like anyway. a typewriter keyboard? It yeah, actually you get that cool your... mechanical feel when you're using your laptop. Yeah, because laptop keyboards suck. They usually <laughs> do, yes. All right, well, back to the uh, water treatment. I'm sure, we'll, uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get a flood of information down the road. Uh, yep, yep. Thank you. All right, uh, I should have done the laugh track for you guys, too, because that was rude <laughs> to make it sound like only my pun was funny. All right, our next article is uh, a WTF story, so let's have a look at that. What the fuck? Exactly. All right, so this one is from Euronews.com, uh, which is probably news about Europe, I'm assuming. Scientists have taught spinach to send emails, and it could warn us about climate change. So, yeah, <laughs> definitely WTF here. But Daniel and I were talking before the show, and I, I think they're really burying the lead here in this one because— oh No, I didn't even th do that on purpose, but yeah, burying the lead. Um, but, you know, they're talking about how it can tell us about climate change, but— then they go on to tell us how how it can detect explosives in yeah, the ground, which yeah. is so much cooler than climate change. Am I, I right? Know. I I think so. Yeah. So the uh, the idea here was that uh, you know they basically had genetically modified spinach so that in reaction to certain chemicals it could trigger a chemical reaction which could be read and then used to trigger an email. So the spinach isn't typing the email. It's just Aww. when yeah. a chemical reaction happens in the spinach, that causes an email to go out. And so they had uh, basically engineered this spinach so that they could plant it across a massive field. And as the roots went into the soil system, they're testing, uh, you know, they're, they're drawing in chemicals from the soil, minerals and all that mess, as well as water. And in the presence of certain chemicals, it could trigger this email to be sent. That they basically generate something that was able to be detected wirelessly. So it's not like they have to hook a cable up to each spinach plant. So they're able to, to sense <laughs> so each this. Each spinach gets an iPad. Like there's an infrared camera that reads the That's what reaction. It, I think it's infrared, yeah. 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 Yep. That's crazy. So uh, they were saying that chemicals used in explosives and landmines are actually fairly easy to detect. It's just who's got the time to go and check an entire field. So they could take a field, plant it with spinach. Yeah. What's uh, spinach doing there? It's got the time. It's and then, you know, if there's a landmine somewhere, it'll signal home and they can find it and, and go on. Now, I mean, if you take some place like Europe where random landmines happen or Afghanistan, you're going to have to plant a whole hell of a lot of spinach. Well, what's interesting to me is like, I think the farmer that's planting the spinach is going to find that landmine for that spinach. Does. <laughs> well, you know, in, in some cases, like you hear about these uh, non-exploded World War II bombs yeah. and stuff, but they're just down deep. Oh, just like super deep down. And so we could be planting on top of them every day and not gotcha. know it. But that stuff permeates in yeah, the, the soil. Yeah, the roots would get down. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I think, too, I was telling you, Daniel, before, I think, you know, now before the next war happens, we'll be flying bombers over just dropping seeds. <laughs> and and that way, you know, before the landmines were even planted. Have landmines been, uh, like, um, illegalized by the Geneva Convention? Yeah. Didn't they say a, it was a like— A lot of things uh, are illegal by the Geneva Convention I that think, aren't uh, really followed. I don't think it's Geneva Convention. I think there was a treat on landmines, landmines yeah. and I think the U.S. did not sign it. Huh. We, I think we were one of the—because isn't that what Angelina Jolie's platform is? I have no idea. Yeah, that Who's was that? That was her thing, like, you know, landmines. Is this a real person? Yes. You're making people laugh. Angelina um, She was in Wanted. You're talking about? She could make bullets All change right, trajectory. Oh, Dan Whatever. Daniel doesn't know. Yeah, break this shit up again. <laughs> You've seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Hackers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Just yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> She's got 37 adopted children. She so was in uh, the, Jiggly. The, so the, Jiggly. <laughs> what, what was it? <laughs> you got me. You got me on that one, Jiggly. You're like, I've seen that 17 uh, times. I don't remember her being in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a 
floating woman. <laughs> that was J Lo. <laughs> That was J Lo, wasn't it? Was it? J-Lo. It's Ben Affleck, right? <laughs> You're thinking <laughs> where they got she together. She wasn't some of so the movie with the with James McAvoy in that wanted movie yeah. where he could. Were they, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Ben Bullock. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just pulling the chain. A ridiculous movie. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that John Voight's daughter? Yeah, that's that's the crazy part. Yeah. Angelina Jolie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's funny is like his real speaking voice is the one from Anaconda, hmm. and it don't want none. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've heard. <laughs> That's what I read. <laughs> I think we got off the, the spinach thing. But anyway, uh, check your spinach. This is why you wash your vegetables yeah. uh, when you get them, because they will send emails otherwise. And if you do suspect a landmine with your spinach, be sure to contact the hotline at 1-900-MIX-A-LOT. <laughs> What's interesting is that they said they finally have broken through the barrier of communication between <laughs> us and plants. We're working on this. I would have picked and something other than spinach. I, I'm just saying, man, finally... <laughs> the plants have a voice, but we still can't it's, talk to dolphins. Know, there's like, hey, there's landmines. <laughs> hey, and I've seen spinach. that one movie. What was the movie where we talked to dolphins? Where the Fa movie? loves what? what? It, there's a dolphin. They put a thing on the back, and it 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 put a landmine or not a landmine, but a mine on the bottom of a boat. <laughs> they trained the dolphin. I was thinking of Sequest, like they had that oh, da- yeah. Darwin, I think his name was. Yeah, but in this in this movie, same kind of thing. They, uh, they weaponized dolphins. To, so, yeah. so don't we? Doesn't the U.S. military actually weaponize dolphins? Yes, they have. I, I thought yeah. they used them to find sea no, mines. No, uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah, they just. Oh, the dolphin blew up. <laughs> yeah. The dolphin blew up. He found yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't All have right. to train that one Hook either. Up. He just, he just <laughs> flipper seventeen, bring it up. <laughs> Ready for flipper eighteen, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, on that note, got a couple of things to let you know about. First of all, uh, we have a webinar coming up on navigating the future of project management, a look at the new PMP exam and industry trends. That's happening today, the day this comes out, which is Thursday, February 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that one should be fun. That's with Chris Ward. Uh, so check that one out at ITPro.tv slash webinars. You can also look at the next one coming up after that uh, with Daniel, which is pick a side, red team versus blue team, you exploring the choices in cybersecurity careers. The dark side. That's right. The Come on, side. man. Red side is the way to go. <laughs> That's where that the blue team is. stuff is hard. So we will talk about uh, how you would prepare for a career in red team or blue team uh, because, yeah, they're different paths. So that takes place on the 25th of February at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And both of those dates I gave were in the future this time. So nice. we're getting better. <laughs> She's super helpful. Yeah, oh. I'm working on that. Uh, so you can head over to itpro.tv slash webinars and sign up for both of those. Uh, we also have a free weekend coming up this weekend uh, on the 13th and 14th, the project management free weekend where we're going to have uh, CompTIA Project Plus, Project Management Professional 6, uh, PMI, Organizational Change Management, uh, Accredited Agile Project Management Foundation, and Accredited Agile Scrum Master are all going to be free this weekend for uh, anyone to watch. You just need a free membership of IT Pro TV. Uh, so head over to ITPro.tv and sign yep. up for that. Project Management Agile, that all falls under brown teaming. <laughs> 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 All right. And while you're on that internet, head over to go.itpro.tv slash technado. You can get a 30% off coupon code for the lifetime of your personal plan. And you can also request a team trial uh, and find out about the cool features available uh, to teams like the Pro Portal. That's all at go.itpro.tv slash technado. All right. Well, thank you to Kathy <laughs> for joining us. And congratulations to her for getting off uh, this before we kind of went downhill there at the end but uh, i thought that was some of our best stuff no i know it was great, you kidding me? Was great. Uh, and kudos to all of you who made it this far i'd say in the podcast if you're still listening uh hey drop us a, a an email as well because we'd love to, to hear from you what is it podcast at itpro.tv i think yeah do that try that see if it works if it doesn't see if it works if it doesn't, if it, work, doesn't it will send soon it, send it somewhere else <laughs> yeah and uh and we will talk about the stories that you send in as well if they don't suck so uh <laughs> thank you you got to put a disclaimer yeah you do they'll be sending anything there's a qualifier there all right thanks guys and thank you all of you for watching we'll see you next week right here on tech nato with don Pazette. <laughs>